morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Catholic Church. Our presider today is Father Mike Garino. And as we gather together, we invite you to please stand and sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. for our Mass together this morning for Robert O'Reilly and for all the parishioners of St. Michael's Parish, both living and deceased. And let us begin as we begin all our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all to prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people to goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of God, Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, Delight one day in eternal rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word, of Lord, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am your shield, 
I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have, an, have my heir, the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, no, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah, as he had said he would. He did for her as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to this son of his who Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Constantly seek his face. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, son of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. 
he reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, as we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family, it probably would be good not only to focus on uh, the threesome of Mary, Joseph, and, and, and Jesus, who play such an important role in our own spiritual journey, in our own salvation history, 
but also maybe to look at even the uh, wider family, sort of the universal family of humankind. You know, I think we could say without question that the relational aspect of life has been weakened. Maybe even it is, um, some people look upon it as uh, being dead, but I don't think that's true. But the, the familial relationship and uh, has in, in our families has just been come so weak and for various reasons, and it's very unfortunate. Um, and I don't think it's something that we can, uh, you know, start arguing about. I think that uh, there's real evidence of this weakness and almost decay. And I think the weakness affects each and every one of us in some way. The following fable, I think, is uh, a good example, a power, powerful example of the contagious grace of change. You know, if there's anything that we need, I think, in our world right now, and in terms of family life, is probably from some change and growth. The membership of a once thriving community of monks just kind of banished an amount of time where it became there were only five brothers left in what I said was this once thriving community. Local people those who lived in the area of the monastery used to come regularly. And they would come there because they would find there, they would find learning, they would find growth, they would find real spiritual renewal in that place. But now it had become like, you know, hardly anybody ever showed up because the spirit of the place and the inhabitants seem to be dying off. One day, a rabbi visited, and as he was about to leave, one of the monks asked him if he had some suggestion for a way that they could uh, revitalize themselves and once again become a spiritual center. And he was quiet, and then he said, after, the th after real thinking, he said, all I can tell you is the Messiah is one of you. Flabbergasted, they responded. The Messiah here, impossible. But as the weeks went on, the, the monks kind of puzzled over what the, the uh, rabbi had said. And they said, well, who would this Messiah be amongst us? Which one of us? Maybe it was Brother Timothy. He was the abbot. He had real leadership qualities. He certainly could be called to be the Messiah. Couldn't be Mark. He's too argumentative, although he's usually right. Maybe it's Brother Pius. Brother Pius takes care of the garden and the animals. He certainly could nourish a wounded world as the Messiah. Maybe it's Brother Dominic. Brother Dominic is very learned. Brother Dominic, Dominic is a real student. He is familiar with all the great spiritual writers. Maybe it's Peter. Uh, Peter 
couldn't be him. Pete is the one who washes the dirty toilets and takes care of the dirty laundry and scrubs pots and pans every day. Couldn't be him. Or could it? Now, the monks couldn't really determine or decide who this Messiah among them was. So they now started to treat each other as, as if each of them was the Messiah. And moreover, they started, well, what happens if I'm the Messiah? So if they started, if they were, the, he himself was the Messiah, they started to treat themselves with greater respect. And they started acting with greater dignity. In just a few short weeks, some of the people started coming back again, a few of them. And once they experienced this love and this goodness, and this spiritual revival, they started coming again and again and bringing their friends. And soon, some young men asked if they could become part of the community. And the community thrived once again. Reading that, I thought, wow. Just think of the possibilities in our families if we heeded or believed the words that the, the rabbi spoke to those monks. That one of us is the Messiah. Wouldn't that change the way that we treated one another? How much more spouses would love and cherish one another? How much more they'd value their children, they'd teach them, they'd love them? How much more children would respect and honor their parents if we only believed that one was the Messiah. And you know something? You know what St. Paul said? I live no longer I, but Christ lives in me. If we really believe that, if we believe that, and we have been taught that since we have been children, that Christ lives in me and in everyone in our family. I think it would change family life if we treated one another as another Christ, as Christ living in me. And it, it's real. When we were baptized, when we were baptized, the Spirit came and lived within us. We believe that. When we were confirmed, received the Holy Spirit, the Spirit lives in us, the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit who is God, makes a big difference in family living. You know, that when you believe that, and when you recognize that, and if you make that your own, then when we treat one another in family life, you know, all of a sudden, we stop all of the, uh, the hopping, and the, uh, we stop all of the criticism, and we look beyond all of those faults and idiosyncrasies that at times can drive us crazy, we look beyond that. We see who that person in front of me is. That's why I'm here. Receive the body and blood of Christ. 
when we receive the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, we receive the Eucharist, our Lord comes within our, ourselves, in our hearts. He takes over for us, takes over us for a while. But he's always there. You know, if that's the kind of love I think that we've just celebrated. We reveled in as we celebrated Christmas. So I just encourage you as you um, go off and into your families that you recognize where you're going. Recognizing, recognize who you are with. Recognize that uh, you can make such a difference, such a unique and difference in the family, which we know is the foundation, is the, it's the infrastructure of our society without which the, our society goes nowhere. Please rise and join with me in the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our God has appeared on earth and lived among us within a holy family. We turn to him now in prayer. For the family of the church, that we may give respect and dignity to all God's children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that the laws they pass will protect and support the family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the obedience to God's word that creates true families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families, that God may bless them with the gifts of unity and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased friends and relatives, especially Michael J. Kovalson, that they may be gathered into the eternal joy of their heavenly home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Robert O'Reilly and St. Michael parishioners whom we are remembering in a special way in this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the parish prayer line, the intentions in the parish, the parish prayer boxes, and our own special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, through the incarnation of Christ and the sacrament of baptism, you have made us your adopted sons and daughters. Help us, like the Holy Family, to deepen our relationship through faith 
hope, and charity through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and in your peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours. And begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so, with all the angels, we praise you. And as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts 
we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the Eucharistic offerings of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may became, become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with just blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unending help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Offer each other a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. I got a little joke, but you can tell I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel. Guy went to a Chinese restaurant and he got into talking to the waiter. And the waiter told him that he was uh, from Japan, really, he grew up in Japan. And he also told him that he was a, a kamikaze pilot uh, in the war. And he said, my code name was Chow Mein. And the guy said, well, a kamikaze pilot, I mean, weren't they suicide bombers? He said, yeah, I was chicken Chow Mein. <laughs> now Father Michael has uh, the announcements. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank Father Mike for uh, celebrating Mass uh, with us uh, again this morning. I have just a few announcements. Because of the increased numbers uh, of parishioners that we get in season, we have made a decision to, um, to uh, ask parishioners to make reservations, particularly for the month of January. We may not need it, but it's, a, it's an attempt to keep everyone safe. If we, in other words, if we, if we find that a particular Mass has more than 240, which is our capacity, we will, we will make arrangements to add extra Masses. So if, if, you, if you plan to come to Mass during the month of January, please call the office to res reserve your spot. It's not something that I or we like to be doing, but it's an attempt to, uh, to keep everyone safe. All of you who are parishioners know uh, how much our numbers increase in season. Uh, summer masses are, are, you know, the eight o'clock would not be uh, hugely uh, supported, but, um, but still we want to try and keep everyone safe. So if you, if you plan on, on coming, please uh, let us know. Also, the, uh, Friday is the, uh, the Feast of uh, Solemnity of Mary. It's a holy day of obligation. Our mass will be at nine o'clock uh, in the morning, as we always do. Uh, our parish office will be closed uh, on Thursday and will open again on uh, Monday, uh, 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 January 4th. Also this weekend, one of our uh, dear parishioners, Nancy Sweeney, has um, supplied a copy of I Heard God Laugh by Matthew Kelly for, for all of you. So I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking Nancy. She said it's from my heart to the parish. And Nancy, thank you for your incredible uh, generosity. So they're at the three uh, main entrances. So please uh, feel free to take one if you wish uh, as you leave uh, church today. Also, um, uh, please take your worship aids uh, with you as you leave. And uh, finally, one of our um, longtime um, uh, uh, parishioners, uh, Michael uh, Kowalson, uh, died uh, last week. His funeral will be on Wednesday. Uh, uh, December 30th here at 11 a.m. And I'd like to take this opportunity, since I probably won't be seeing many of you, to wish all of you uh, a happy new year. Thank you. Please join together in singing Angels We Have Heard on High. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why 
why your joyous strains prolong. Say no what may the tidings no be, which inspire your heavenly song. 